Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Those of you who are here in the congregation and those of you who are in our congregation online. Our service begins on page 323 in the red prayer books or on the first page of your bulletins for those of you who have them. Nice problem to have running out of bulletins. We'll try to do better next year. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Ezekiel defines a true prophet as one who repairs the wall and stands in the breach on behalf of the people returning from exile. Based on this criterion, the author of our reading is truly a prophet. He stands in the gap between God and Judah, decreeing a new age of freedom and restoration and refusing to leave God in silence until Zion's vindication is manifest on earth as it is in heaven. Our Old Testament reading is from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
Our psalm is the second of five Alleluia hymns that close the Hebrew Psalter. Each of the last five psalms starts and ends with the imperative, Praise the Lord. Together, these psalms put a final exclamation point on the book that the Hebrew worshiping community calls Praises. Let's read Psalm 147 responsively with the men reading the odd-numbered verses and the women reading the even-numbered verses. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant to honor Him with praise! He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. <clears throat> he is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with finest wheat. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He sends forth his words and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. from Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. How many of you have seen the television character Archie Bunker? Uh, Quite a few of you. For those of you who haven't, Archie was the star of a popular TV series in the 1970s called All in the Family. And what a family it was. Today we would call it dysfunctional with an emphasis on the fun. My favorite contributor to this madhouse was Cousin Maud, played by the incomparable golden girl, B. Arthur. Maud was so popular with the viewers that she had her own show for a while. I considered her a provocative theologian. When she got angry, she got angry a lot. She would say, God's going to get you for that. If she got really angry, her threat was, God's wife is going to get you for that. (laughs) But her most frequent expression, and for me her most profound theology, came at those times when she would turn to her audience and mutter, I wish I hadn't said that. At those moments, I could really identify with Maud. Can any of you? Maud knew what many of us often forget, that words are the most powerful instruments in the world, whether they are written or spoken. The most advanced technology humans can invent will never equal the power of words for good 
or for evil. Thomas Jefferson knew the power of words. So did Winston Churchill. So did Adolf Hitler. So did Martin Luther King Jr. They knew that words can create and words can destroy. Words can build whole civilizations. God's chosen people did not become a nation until God gave them the law, the Ten Commandments through Moses, and later the other books of case law we read in the Jewish scriptures. In his letter to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul calls the law our disciplinarian until Christ came. And while Paul claims that Jesus fulfilled the law and made it unnecessary for those of us who are not Jews to observe its details scrupulously, which is nice for those of us who like shrimp and lobster, the apostle never makes light of the creative power God unleashed through the giving of the law. Our own country needed the carefully crafted and hotly debated constitution before we could call ourselves a nation. Those words continue to be hotly debated today, but there is no doubt that the United States Constitution has at least one thing in common with the Ten Commandments. Both are living documents that continue to exert enormous influence. In our daily lives, words can build us up and words can tear us down. We have all been on the receiving end of cruel or unkind words, words which destroy our confidence or make us feel unworthy or unloved. We may have even spoken such words whether we intended to or not. And then, like Maud, we cry out to God and to ourselves, I wish I hadn't said that. Or in this age of email and Twitter, we might say, OMG, I wish I hadn't sent that. Jesus took the power of words very seriously. In fact, in Matthew's Gospel, he tells his disciples that on the day of judgment, each of us will have to give an account for every careless word we utter. OMG, indeed. But there is good news in both the Hebrew and Christian scriptures. The Bible tells us that words are the strongest force in the universe for the doing of God's work, work in which we are actually allowed to participate. In the book of Genesis, God literally speaks the world into existence. Our psalm for today declares that God sends his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. What God speaks is created. The author C.S. Lewis adds a nice touch in his children's book, The Magician's Nephew. He has Aslan, the Christ figure in his Narnia series, sing the world into existence. We also can create with our words. We may not have the responsibility of creating a world or a nation, but we can bring into being other things equally valuable in God's eyes. Through our words, we can inspire confidence. We can touch hearts. We can build self-esteem. We can express love. We can nurture relationships. We can praise God. One of the highest compliments that can be paid a person is to say of them, their word is their bond. So it is with God. 
In Isaiah 55, the Lord assures us, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. When Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, God literally took upon himself our flesh. That is what the word incarnation means, enfleshment. God's word, in all its creative power, its complete dependability, and its unlimited love, was revealed and enfleshed in a human being as the Apostle Paul reminds us in our reading from Galatians. David Boyd writes, Jesus is the very word of God. Who Jesus is, what he says, and what he does are all the same thing. He speaks to the winds and the waves. They settle down. He speaks life into the dead legs of the paralytic. The paralytic walks home. He tells Lazarus to come out. Lazarus sheds his shroud. Jesus said he would die. He said he would rise. God's revelation became God's victory. Jesus is the very word of God. Yet Jesus was and continues to be one of us. He was and is all of us at our best. If you want to know what God intended us to be like, look at Jesus. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. In this holy season, the church celebrates the Incarnation. And it is only the church which celebrates this event. The world celebrates something else entirely. Not all of it bad, of course, but not the Incarnation. If you ask the average person what Christmas is all about, the more knowledgeable might say something about a baby in the manger. The world can handle cute, cuddly babies. But on this first Sunday of the Christmas season, Paul might talk about children of God, but neither he nor the Gospel of John says a word about babies. Our Gospel talks about Almighty God, the creator of the universe, becoming one of us. Do we have any idea how much God has honored us? What the Lord has done to repair the breach between God and us? The world has no idea. When Jesus came to his own people, even they did not understand who he was. The incarnation is impossible to believe without God's help because this doctrine is so contrary to human logic. Why should God who had it pretty good up there in heaven, creating galaxies, suns, and planets in their courses, why should God want to become a human being, much less a helpless, vulnerable baby? Human beings have never been anything but trouble for God. Why should he want to be born into poverty and to live a life of rejection, loneliness, and pain? Why lower himself to enter our messy reality when he did not have to? The Christian faith teaches that for love of us, this is exactly what God did. The word became flesh and lived among us. 
Jesus Christ, Son of God, fully human, yet fully divine. As God, Jesus has the power to save us. No mere mortal could do such a thing. A strictly human Jesus, in which most people believe, could point the way to God. But that's all a human Jesus could do. Just give us an impossible standard to live up to. That is what the law did for God's people, according to Paul. The law points God's people in the right direction. It is a great source of inspiration, but it cannot in itself give anyone the ability to keep the law. John's Gospel, however, tells us that God's Son can do what the law cannot. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Jesus Christ makes us children of God and gives us grace to speak words of healing, peace, and love. People whose words create rather than destroy. Whose words build up rather than tear down. And because Jesus is also human, he can identify with us. In his love, he chose to experience our pain and take it into himself. As an early Christian bishop put it, Christ became as we are so that we might become as he is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What has come into being with him was life. And the life was the light of all people. And the word became flesh and lived among us. May the love of Christ bring us light in our darkness. Light that we can share with a world that desperately needs it. The world God created with his word and redeemed with his word made flesh, Jesus, our Lord. Merry Christmas. stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. The Creed is found on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and Michael Hahn, our diocesan bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, and Michelle, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and the peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people who do, to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Dan and Judy, Alton, James, Kimmy, Shauna and family, Lisa, Martha and Sylvia, Kirk, Oliver, Nathaniel, Amy, Abe, Chrissy, DJ and Diana, Judy, Samantha, Lisa and Veronica, Gordon and Martha, Lee, Wayne, Dana, are there others? And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Russ Soper, Fred Rogers, Irene Kiefer, Ron Manderbach, Anne and Henry Breswich, Margaret Luce, John Granville, Rita Harlan, Bert Kennedy, Ed and Mary Johnson, Richard Mooney, George Davidson, Donna Scurry, B.J. Korn, John Hempfling, Marcelin Bellis, Sadie Schreiber, Seal Doss Sr., Harry Burdick, Florence Thompson. Are there others? beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Andrew, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Taking a moment for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Again, for those of you who are with us online, we do have a coffee hour this morning. And for those of you who are visiting or who are new, our coffee hours are world renowned. <laughs> and I encourage you to stay and let us get to know you. And welcome to our visitors. I'm Jeannie Lutz. I'm the Reverend Jeannie Lutz, and I go back a long way. Uh, with this congregation. Both our sons were baptized here. And being retired, I have to be attached somewhere. Uh, the bishop doesn't like, no pun intended, loose cannons. And so, <laughs> uh, and I said, although I'm not a canon, okay. I am attached to St. Andrews by my request, and I am delighted to be here when I can. Most of the time, I'm off in different uh, churches doing supply work because we have a shortage of clergy. And so I'm glad to make myself available and grateful to Father Jonathan for allowing that. Uh, thank you to all of you volunteers who decorated the church so beautifully, uh, including the sanctuary area and all these lovely Christmas decorations. And I would like to add that the Altar Guild will be everybody's new best friends if you will take these poinsettias home today. Those of you who donated them, of course, 
uh, be sure and take one home. Those who didn't are also welcome uh, because, of course, next Sunday we will be uh, beginning the season of Epiphany. Well, actually, Saturday. Uh, Epiphany is January 6th, and then on the 7th we'll have the first Sunday after the Epiphany, so we'll have our Christmas decorations gone but not forgotten. Uh, Father Jonathan wanted me to announce that the annual meeting follows another combined service, a 10 o'clock service on January 21st. And this week we're pretty much back to a normal schedule, almost. Uh, morning prayer on Tuesday at 9.30. The office will reopen on Tuesday, January the 2nd. And Wednesday, the women's breakfast at 9 o'clock at the Bite of Belgium over here. Thursday, the men's breakfast at 8 o'clock uh, at Chilitos on Foothills Drive. There will be no Thursday Eucharist this week. But next week, January the 11th, it will resume. Are there other announcements? Do we have birthdays and anniversaries we need to celebrate together today? Whoops. Well, darn. <laughs> Let's try this again. Why don't you just put it down? Well, I could just put it down. Yes, that would be the logical thing to do. So Chuck, happy birthday, happy birthday. And if you would like to pray with me for Chuck, the prayer can be found somewhere, page 830. Page 830. All righty. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servant Chuck, as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And Wendy and Jim, happy anniversary to you. Thank you. And let me find the right prayer for you. Okay, it's one of these ribbons here. Okay. Um, and I bet it's in the wedding section. Four. 31, maybe, something like that. Yes, 431. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
things come of thee, O Lord. Land of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer 1 on page 333 in your prayer books. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty <coughs> that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, because thou didst give Jesus Christ, thine only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Ghost was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become thy children. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death, upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. <coughs> For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, 
be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. One body are we, for though many we share one bread. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. There are gluten-free wafers available for those of you who need them. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
after communion is found on page 339 in the prayer book. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.